¿Qué tal si pudiéramos destruir tumores cancerosos sin los dañinos efectos secundarios de la cirugía, radiación o quimioterapia? Esa es la meta de dos investigadoras de la Universidad Rice, Naomi Hallas y Jennifer West. La doctora Hallas es la física que inventó las nanocáscaras de oro, diminutas esferas de cristal bañadas en oro. También descubrió que podía modificarlas para absorber ciertas longitudes de onda o colores de luz y aumentar así su temperatura. La doctora West, una bioingeniera, sugirió modificar las nanocáscaras para captar la parte infrarroja cercana del espectro. A pesar de ser invisible a simple vista, la luz infrarroja cercana puede atravesar la piel sin dañarla. Halas y West pensaron que si podían lograr que las nanocáscaras de oro se acumularan únicamente los tumores, podrían entonces exponerlas a la luz infrarroja cercana desde afuera y quemar los tumores sin dañar el tejido circundante. Pero funcionaría. Halas y West están decididas a averiguarlo. We first got excited about working with nanoshells because we understood their properties and it was their properties that fascinated us and we realized to take this very simple sphere and just by changing the relative size of the layers we can tune it to whatever color we want but we could never control it very well and so after some experiments and some studies that I've been doing with my students went to bed and about 2.30 in the morning I woke up and I realized we'll never really be able to control this structure unless we figure out a way to build it stepwise ourselves. And that I remember very distinctly came out of a dream because I came in the next morning and my, and my student and I had been working very, very hard on these topics. I just went, saw him right away and I said, you know, we just need to build these things ourselves. And he knew exactly what I meant and he just said, yeah. And so after we invented them, And this happens to lots of inventors. You look around and you say, well, what could this be good for? A colleague had introduced us, so Naomi came to my office. She had a couple of papers and graphs about the nanoshells. So when I walked into her office and we sat down and we talked, we realized that there was a very, a, a, quite a wonderful hand in glove fit that was happening. The thing that struck me immediately was this fact that you could make them in the near infrared. And I was somewhat familiar with the fact that infrared wavelengths, near infrared wavelengths, could pass through tissue. The near infrared was very unique to biomedicine, and so at that point we started brainstorming about applications. Over the first cup of coffee we came up with approximately five, I think about five applications and patents and uh, lots of ideas for projects but then quickly moved into the cancer therapy area because that was such a unique niche. One of the most exciting things about science, and in particular about nanoscience, is that it often, you can often develop interesting projects that are at the interfaces between disciplines. We start off at the very beginning just showing that you can actually heat up the nanoparticles when you expose them to light. And then from there, we had very exciting results and moved into cell culture studies. We put nanoshells on top of the cells. They didn't in introduce any harm to the cells. Light by itself was harmless, but then when we got the combination, we could very effectively destroy the cancerous cells in tissue culture. Then we began to actually look at um, actually look at, at chicken breast. So we used avian, what, what scientists would call avian tissue, but what is really chicken breast from the supermarket. Our student, he injected a nanoshell solution into the chicken tissue, and then he put his laser goggles on so he couldn't see very much. And then he took the chicken tissue and he held it in the laser. And after about 10 or 15 seconds, he started to smell something funny. And so he took off his laser goggles and he looked at the chicken breast and there was a black hole and smoke coming out right where the nanoshells had been irradiated by the laser. And normally the light, for the light levels that were being used, the light would pass right through the chicken breast. So this was, this, that was truly a eureka moment.
in the first experiment that was performed, there was approximately 10 mice, and all of the mice survived that were treated. This experiment consisted of having three groups of mice. We had one group that was treated with nanoshell therapy, one group that was completely untreated, and a third group that was treated in a therapy that looked like the nanoshell therapy, except when the nanoshell solution was injected, they injected just saline solution without nanoshells. So they went through the whole laser treatment, but there was a laser treatment without nanoshells. So of the three treatments, only the nanoshell treated mice showed a remission of tumors, and within two weeks, all of their tumors had disappeared, and the tumors never reappeared. From the time that we did the nanoshell treatment, within 10 days, the tumors had completely disappeared and were completely undetectable in the animals. Most scientists will tell you almost nothing ever works the first time. You, things usually fail and you spend your time trying to figure out, well, why did this go wrong and why did that go wrong and how can I make this work? I've had uh, a cousin who was actually exactly my age die of metastatic melanoma recently. And it was actually while we were in the midst of this research. And that was really hard too, to feel like we had something that could eventually have helped her, but not be there in time. People will call me frequently and ask me specifically about their spouse, their child, their parents. Uh, and tell me about the type of cancer they have and ask whether this is a, a treatment that's available and it's heartbreaking. On average I'm getting three to four hundred contacts either email or phone calls a month from patients or families of patients. I identify with them very closely. My father in fact was diagnosed with prostate cancer two years ago so I can understand their care and their concern. I urge them not to wait for this, but to pursue the therapies that they have access to, uh, whether they are new clinical trials for other therapies or whether they are other commercially available, available therapies from their cancer provider, um, to, to pursue whatever the best options are for people to survive. So if you were a patient, the procedure would be pretty straightforward. First you'd have an injection of nanoshells and they'd circulate through the bloodstream. And over the next several hours, the patient would wait. And during that time, the nanoshells would accumulate slowly into the tumor site. And then the doctor would shine light through the skin into the tumor site. So the nanoshells will capture the light, convert the light to heat, but only sufficiently to raise the temperature of the cells until, until cell death is induced. The dead cells would eventually dissipate, the tumor would shrink, and the nanoshells would leave the body. In the nanoshell therapy, the nanoshells by themselves are completely harmless to the patient. The light by itself is harmless to the patient, and it's only when you get the combination right at the tumor site that you induce any harmful effects, and that allows us to spare damage to any of the normal tissues. So the health risks of nanoshells seem to be very, very minimal. There's been extensive work done now looking at the toxicity and safety of nanoshells to go into the FDA regulatory process. There haven't been any alarming findings at this point, but I think it's critical to continue to study this and to stay on top of it. And with any new nanomaterial, it's important to be aware of potential risks early and to try and explore them at the beginning of a technology.